Okay, hi, uh, my name is Derek and I'm your instructor for our machine learning and uh, data analytics class. Um, in this uh, video, we're going over the unit two. Um, this is our second video. Um, now we're up to looking at uh, preparing our data and cleaning it, okay? So in the previous video, we kind of went through doing some data exploration. So our goal in this um, step is to look at some of the steps you might do for data preparation, getting it ready so you can actually begin building some machine learning models. All right, so um, our book talks about most all of these. Uh, we're mostly going to look at um, filling in some uh, missing values um, and a little bit of some of the issues with feature scaling. Um, oh, and we all we are also adding in another feature too. We actually began this process because um, uh, we looked at creating some new values a little bit when we were doing the data exploration uh, in the previous video. So we'll talk some more about kind of some feature engineering in here. Okay, so um, uh, we're looking at uh, notebook two dash two here about the data cleaning. So I open that up. I'm going to go ahead and um, restart the kernel and clear all the outputs. Um, it will rerun everything to reload or refetch the data, well, uh, reload into a uh, pandas data frame here. So let's run everything up above that. So, um, <clears throat> um, and I've been kind of, as I've been learning, um, uh, Jupyter Lab a little bit more. I've been normally keeping a contextual help open here, so I still have that open. And I often um, like to open up a uh, uh, a new console for the notebook uh, and just have that open. So th these are actually sharing the same kernel, so uh, everything that just ran here um, is is uh, available uh, uh, in here. So for example, all of the 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 um, the data that we just loaded, including like the housing uh, data, is in there. So uh, this tends to be, for me, a little bit of a cleaner solution than um, creating new cells in order to uh, add in new code and try things. So you know, we can check again, for example, that we've got our expected data frame with the expected number of, of instance rows and the expected number of feature columns here. Uh, and we're all set to go here. Another thing I like to do is I like to uh, select the show all kernel activity. So as I run stuff up here, you'll, I'll actually see the things that get into So you have a history of, of the stuff that you run if you rerun cells here. So. Um, okay. So um, actually, I skipped over something in the previous video, the creating uh, a test set and the training set. Um, this is kind of the, 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 the final step of exploration or the first step of sort of preparing data for a machine learning algorithm. So the, the, our, our checklist from the textbook actually kind of skips over this as well, but, um, um, but there's a lot of discussion in our textbook about uh, doing it like a training test uh, set split and, and why you do that. Okay, so it is important that you split your data into a training set, into a test set, um, and that um, so now as we're getting ready to preparing our data for um, for doing machine learning with it, it's important that we split off a, a test set and we don't look at that. We don't touch that. So, so we don't allow anything that's over in our test set to influence the decisions we make in terms of what models we're going to use and, and our parameter tuning and stuff like that. Okay. So um, I don't want, don't want to spend a lot of time with this. So there are some subtle issues with this. And again, if you're doing real data science, uh, you, you have to stop and think about your training and test split. Um, so when, when we're learning about doing data science and data analytics, it's often sufficient to simply you know randomly shuffle our data and then split it um, from our shuffle. So that's so and, and you can easily roll your own train test split. So so this function uh, as an example um, and, and the textbook uh, has the same function here. So all this does is, is randomly uh, shuffle the indexes um, of our um, of our um, uh, samples from our data set, uh, and then once we've randomly shuffled or randomly randomly permuted um, our indexes, we can take the first, you know, um, so, so if we want a 20, 80, 20% 20 in our test 
data and 80% in the training data, we can, for example, take the first 20% um, of the indexes and have those for our testing set and, and the remaining for the training set, okay? So that, that's just the function. So if, if, if you actually call the function for the, 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 the train test split with a 20% split, we expect, uh, and, and this function will get exactly the uh, number of, of values in your test um, set that you ask for, right? So we would expect to get, you know, so, so since we had uh, a bit over 20,000, we, we expect to get exactly 4,128 um, in our test set, and, and then, so that ends up meaning that you end up with 16,512 in the training set, and if you look at the shape after splitting with this, that's exactly what you would get with this function, okay? <coughs> um, so, like I said, I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but um, one subtle issue about this is that um, um, we are also, uh, here in our example, before we actually call this, we set our random seed. Um, so this will guarantee, as long as the, the, the data, the housing data before we call this uh, split train test, uh, as long as that data is the same, we'll always get the same train test split if we set the random seed before we call the function, okay? But this might not be good enough in a real data science project because, you know, you might be getting new data all the time, so your data set might be changing. Uh, you might end up having to remove some data, you know, so some, some data from the middle that, that was corrupted or things like that or, or have to shuffle things around. So if anything get removed or added or shuffled around, uh, if I call this again, I, I could get a, a different train test split, which which could be problematic, all right? So uh, if you read our textbook, so one common way to deal with that, if it's really crucial to make certain that you always get the same data in the, the training set and, and always get the same data in the test set, um, is we could um, split, we, we could hash by some unique identifier, okay? So the idea with this is that if we use like a hash on a unique identifier, the unique identifier will never change. And then if you always use the same hash function, you'll always end up hashing to the same um, uh, hash ID or the, the same hash value, all right? So um, we can uh, use that to guarantee that our train test split will be stable, even if we're moving things around or moving stuff. So anything that was originally in the, 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 the training set from the split, um, if you're using the same hash D and, and the same um, unique identifier, will, will always be in the training set from the split, no matter if, if you shuffle around data or do other stuff or add new data or things like that. Okay? So that's, that's the advantage of this method. Um, so I won't say much more about that. Uh, so one thing about this, though, is that it doesn't guarantee, although I noticed that, um, so here we don't really have a unique identifier, so we could create one by um, um, adding an index, okay? But again, we, we've now added um, a, a, a value that this could possibly change. So if it, in order to use this method, you would want to actually write out this unique index, right? And then if you delete data, you, you wouldn't want to fill back in with that unique index and things like that. You would always want to add new data by adding the next unique index <clears throat> and other kind of issues with that, okay? So we didn't really fix the problem here by by generating um, a, a new index, right? Uh, and, and also, we actually happen to get exactly the same 20-80%, but you're not guaranteed to get uh, that split uh, with this data here. So here, like if, if we add a unique ID based on the longitude and latitude, notice that, that you don't get exactly 4,128 in the test data and, and 16,512 in the train data, right? But usually that, that's not a big concern as long as it's close. So it doesn't have to be exactly 80-20, uh, especially if you have a, a large amount of data, right? So that's, that's often not really a big deal here. And, and here, you know, if we always use this unique ID, we're always going to be guaranteed that, um, and, and if we're always using like an 80-20 split, 
we're always going to get it, even if we redo this or add new data, the, the, the ones that ended up in our training data will always end up in the training data um, because of um, if you do it using this method here, all right? Um, So uh, you, you don't have to create that function by hand. So there is a, you know, so if we're using scikit-learn and, and um, another thing that we're going to do today is we're going to talk about um, uh, a, a quick introduction to the scikit-learn uh, library here. So, um, so yeah, I, n I normally wouldn't roll that by hand if I'm doing anything complex. I would rely on, on, on a professional library like scikit-learn, right? So there is a basic one for doing a split. The, the, the implementation of this probably looks pretty much exactly like what we just did by hand here, except it allows you to pass in a random um, seed, basically, so that, again, so that you can always get the same, ta same, the same train test split, assuming that your data that you're passing in uh, doesn't change um, before you do the split here. So... Um, So one thing I did want to talk a little bit about, though, is that um, when you're tr when you're splitting your data into train data and test data, uh, this is really a sampling problem. So again, it, it really helps if you've taken some basic statistics before this course to understand about sampling. So everything you might learn in a basic statistics course. Um, 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 you, uh, the, uh, anything you might have learned about sampling um, would apply here when you're doing your train test split, okay? So the, the, issue, the issue I want to talk about here is that you could get unlucky uh, in your train test split and end up with an unrepresentative sample for your training data or for your test data. Um, so in particular, if you have some variables that are really important to make certain that they are correctly represented both in your train and test data, you might want to do a stratified sampling, okay? And, and that's what we're going to hear, and that's going to end up being the, the train test split that we use um, in the rest of <clears throat> uh, this chapter here as, as a stratified sample. Um, so the idea is that, for example, we, we might determine that, so we already know from the previous video that the median income is probably going to be important for our machine learning classifier here. Um, so we might want to make certain that all of the, uh, that, that when we split into a train and test set, uh, that, that kind of, we, we have representative, representative samples of our, um, uh, of, of all of the different income levels in both the training data and the testing data, okay? So the way to do that is to perform what's known as stratified sampling, okay? So you can't, perform stratified sampling on a continuous value, which median income is right now. So it's, it's, it's a real value number. So uh, we, in order to do stratified sampling, we're going to have to create a categorical var variable. So here's an example of creating a categorical variable using cut from pandas. So we're going to cut it up into um, um, five different levels, right? So remember that that um, median income um, was kind of a bit strange, and it was normalized to values from zero to fifteen, um, and um, so it's a little bit of a, a question about what might be some good um, bins to cut this up into. But but here we, we've already kind of thought about that. And we decided to cut it up into bins from zero to one point five, and then one point five to three, and so on. Right. So we can we can create a histogram. So if you do that. Um, so this might not be the greatest cut, so we might want to have these more of, of a um, <clears throat> more equal here. Uh, but but here, yeah. So so we we end up with you know um, the, this this is the the cut in our raw data, right? So so we've got about a thousand samples have um, uh, are in this first bin. So a thousand samples have median incomes that were categor categorized from zero to one point five. You know, and then we have quite a bit more, you know, above 6,000 were in the second bin and so on, right? But that's the distribution of samples in our raw data. So the idea for, from stratified sampling is 
our test and train set, we want to end up with this, basically the same distribution. Okay, so if we're going to sample um, on the median income um, or this income category that we just created, our test and train set should have the same distribution uh, after we sample. We do this, okay? So yeah, again, you know, um, you could roll this by hand, but it's going to be much more complex to get it correct here. So uh, we would probably want to use the stratified uh, shuffle split function from uh, a professional library like SKLearn uh, to do stratified sampling correctly here, right? Um, So if we do this, the, the stratified um, um, sampling is going to be guaranteed to get exactly the the 80-20 split like we had before. So it gets exactly an 80-20 an split here. But the important thing, that if we look at the um, distribution uh, of, of the samples that ended up um, um, in our test and train set, um, we'll see that, that now, so for example, here's our raw data. So, so if you look at these, so, um, and if we do a value count, um, in income category one, about, you know, 3.9% of the values, about 4% of the values were in income category one. Um, and, you know, 31, 32% of the values were in income category two and so on. And that's the raw data. So you can do the same thing for our, um, stratify it for the test and for the train, okay? And what you want to see if you do your stratified sampling correctly um, is that these numbers are basically the same. So we end up with the same distribution for the value that we're sampling on uh, here. And they are the same to the first three or even four digits for, for in both the train and the test set to the original um, raw data set here, right? So, so that's good. So kind of in summary on that, so, so um, we might not be, we're not going to be using this income category. We only used it for our stratified sampling, so we might want to go ahead and remove that. So we're back to our original um, 10 um, um, attributes uh, for our data set here, right? But what we've just done now, so, so we've now successfully split our data into training and test sets. But we're a little bit more confident that we did the split well. We, we've got a good sample. So our, in, in particular, for our most important variable, our most important attribute, the, the median income, we've, we've probably got fairly representative samples in our training data um, of, of all the different income levels, right, because of how we just did our uh, train test split here, all right? Um, okay, so that's 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 kind of a few of the things that I want to thoughts that I want to talk about for you know doing the, the train test split. There, there's there's a lot of subtle issues. You have to be careful if you're doing real data analytics um, for you know for quick and dirty stuff. Um, uh, you still want to split into train and test sets, although just randomly shuffling it and, and splitting it then um, is usually is, is often sufficient um, um, when, you're, when you're doing things quickly. So. Okay, so let's um, let's move on here. So um, now we're going to get into to doing some actual data preparation. Okay, so like I said, there, there's kind of more, and our textbook discusses more. We're, we're mostly going to look at um, <clears throat> some data cleaning. So in particular, um, filling in missing values. Uh, and then also look at some feature scaling and, and some, adding some custom features. Um, so adding some custom transformations to add some new attributes. So we are, already kind of looked at that a little bit in the previous notebook here. So, um, <clears throat> so, so we're going to make a copy of the um, of, of our, our of our training set that we just created here. So um, as we talked about in our checklist, um, so to do all of our data cleaning here, we'll, we'll, start, we'll always start with our clean uh, train and test split. Um, so um, I'm going to reuse the name housing now. Um, 
but now in preparation, so our, our first preparation is, is we're going to drop the, um, the, the feature that, that's our predictor, or that's our label that we want to predict here. So, so since we're trying to predict the mean, mean house value, uh, we want to remove that from our training data um, and, and have that in a separate vector that I'll call housing labels. Okay. So now at this point, though, uh, we're, we're simply going to be using our training data. We're going to be cleaning it, right? And we've got 16,512 samples in our training data, and we've got nine features right now before we start doing some transformations and maybe adding some features and, and things like that, right? Um, okay, so um, the first thing we're going to look at is missing values, right? So, um, so there's some other things, if I can go back quickly, here that we might want to do in data cleaning, like remove outliers, um, and, and we might want to do some other things in data cleaning, like um, 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 uh, look for uh, the, the features that are that have weird distributions and things like that, right? So again, you know, data cleaning can be could be a whole class in and of itself. Um, so, uh, but, but yeah, so we'll look at, at Missing values, right? Um, missing values are, are are the most you know kind of common problems. So in any real data set, you're going to have to worry about and handle missing values, and you don't want to just ignore them. You have to do something. I mean, at a minimum, you have to fill them in with zeros um, before you can pass them into a machine learning classifier. But you might want to do something slightly more complicated. So um, we're gonna look, we'll look at three real quickly here. And these are by no means the only way you could handle missing data. So the simplest is um, um, so actually I'll skip to number two. We, we could just get rid of the whole attribute, okay? And in particular, like like if if you're missing a lot of that attribute, you know, so um, and and what what a lot is might depend on context, but once you get more than 40, 50, 60 percent of the data is missing for an attribute try to fill in the missing stuff becomes a tough problem in and of itself. So you might not, you might be doing more harm than good if you try to fill in if you've got too much missing, right? So in that case, uh, something that's a candidate, either if that's an important, if you think that might be a useful or important attribute, you might want to go back and try and gather that data again or somehow fill it in from the original data source or, or find an alternate data source that can help you fill it in, right? But if, but if it might not be too useful, you might just drop the whole attribute. So you might just remove that column, right? So that's something you could certainly do. The other thing is, is you might just remove the row. So any row that's missing that data, maybe you can still build a good classifier from all the samples that you have that, that, that have that value um, present. So you could just re remove the, the corresponding samples or the corresponding rows, right? So, so that's an option that we won't explore, but, but that's often a good choice, right? Especially if you have an intermediate amount. So, so you, you want to use as much data as you possibly can, so you, so you hate to remove rows, but, um, but, but maybe that will give you a cleaner data set that you can use for the, the, the machine learning classifier that you want to build. Um, uh, so we'll mostly look at trying to make up some values in some way. So if you're using a, a pandas data frame, um, it's pretty easy to just drop. So if you want to do option one, we could just drop um, the, um, so, so drop NA means drop things that have missing values, basically. NA is not available or not applicable, right? So, so a pandas, if you load something into a pandas data frame, it, it will fill in something that's missing uh, with a special identifier to mean that it's a missing value, and then you can drop those those rows here, right? Um, so if you do it this way, um, it, it will um, drop rows, and it will only drop rows whose column has that missing value. If you don't specify the subset, it will drop all rows who have, who have some column that has a missing value, which you can also do. 
if you want to do option two, just drop the attribute uh, we already dropped um, before. So, so you can drop a particular column by using, instead of drop by NA, do, do drop and, and give a, a particular column. That you want to do. We, we did that when we, <coughs> uh, we just did that here as well to create our um, um, input data without the label that we want to train with. So option three, then uh, we want to um, we'll look at option three here. So um, we can fill in. So we could do that with just plain pandas, uh, but we'll look at scikit-learn here methods to 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 do option three to impute to fill in some values. So the easiest we, we could just fill the NAs with zero, right? So sometimes that's fine, right? Um, or other common approaches are to fill with the mean or the median value. So that, that's often a good, uh, just generic guess. So, so if you don't know what it is, but you, but you still want uh, to have some information, uh, the, 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 the mean of that value um, might work fine, or the median, if you have no other information, if, if that's missing. Right? So, um, so um, oh, I wanted to point out again here, um, so we showed this in the previous video, but um, uh, notice that after our train test split, um, again, we don't have any other missing data except in the total bedroom. So we have 16,500 uh, samples now in our test data set, and we've only got, we've got, we're missing about 200, uh, a little less than 200 in our total bedrooms, okay? And we haven't done any imputation. If, if we, um, and I don't want to run this, um, but you can run it yourself. Um, but yeah, if we uncommented that and did this, um, um, that would fill those in with uh, a median value. And, and so that would get our total bedrooms back up so we don't have any missing values here if, if we did that, okay? So we could have performed step three by hand or any of those steps by hand using um, pandas. Um, Uh, but instead, uh, we'll use um, uh, scikit-learn to do this. So, so here's an example using scikit-learn. Um, so the simplest is um, we could um, create a simple imputer which basically imputes or fills in missing values, basically. Right? <clears throat> and... Um, Unfortunately, the imputer only works on numerical values, so if we try to pass it in something currently right now, one of our values is, is an object type. It's, it's actually a categorical variable that we, as we've talked about a little bit already. So um, before we can actually use the imputer, we have to make a view um, of our data frame that only has the numerical. So if, if we drop the non-numerical, we've only got one to drop in this case, so we can just remove it. And, and end up with a data frame with only the numerical values, and then we can fit, okay? So um, actually, you have to, um, I'm, I'm going to talk about this in, in just a bit here, um, but um, you have to do both a fit and a transform to actually fill in the values. So fitting only kind of sets up the imputer, so it basically it calculates what the median is, okay? So we can we can look at the statistics. So the imputer, if, if you run using scikit-learn, this imputer, it will fill in all missing values. In this case, it will fill in all missing values with the mean for that that attribute. Okay. So the first thing it has to do before it can it, it fill in the missing values, it has to find what the uh, sorry the median is. So basically, for the fit, all it did was calculate the median of each of these features. Okay. So we could have done the same thing, um, for example, using num uh, using pandas to ask for the median, right? So if, if you calc if you call the median function on a um, pandas data frame, it'll calc the calculate the median for all columns, um, and then we just display the values here, so you, so you get the same results, right? So to actually do the imputation. So if um, we, so again, we, we still haven't actually done the imputation. So um, if I look at housing and describe it, 
Um, there's still some missing ore. Uh, actually, in this case, we're using a subset. We're using the um, just the numerical attributes from our data frame. So if, if I look at that, um, so again, so, so now we've, we've got um, um, only the numerical attributes, um, and uh, we, we still haven't actually filled in our missing values, right, even though we've talked about it a lot already. So, so we're still missing about 200, a little bit less than 200 from our total bedroom. So, so let's actually carry it out now at this point. So, so, so we, we set up our um, object um, to be able to impute the missing values with the median. So now if you call it the transform, um, it will actually fill in those missing values. Um, although it doesn't fill it in, in place, so, so it, it creates a new... Actually, in this case, uh, so um, scikit-learn works with data frames, or sorry, works with NumPy arrays um, or with SciPy sparse matrices. Um, so uh, anyway, if you call a transform, it's going to actually return a NumPy array for us. So, so after we call imputer, uh, the result is... Uh, I save that into a variable called um, x. Again, kind of this our generic name for a a table of data values, uh, but it's a NumPy array. Um, but it's you know it's got our sixteen five twelve samples, and it's got the eight columns, which are our eight numerical features still, right? Um, so. Uh, if I want to use kind of the nice features of pandas, I can put this back into a, a data frame. Okay, so I can I can get x back into a, a data frame, um, and I'll give it back the same column names that we were using um, here by 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 doing this transformation. And and I'm going to call this housing under tr for um, um, transformed, basically. So we we've added in the um, um, we, we filled in the missing values at this point. And so now, yeah, again, if I do the describes, so, so this, the, the point of all this is, is, is you want to go back and, and um, uh, look at this. And so what we were trying to do is get those missing values filled in for our total bedroom. So, so now we, we've got that. Um, so, and, and if we look at the... Um, So if we want to search for the um, missing values now, we shouldn't find any um, if, if we look for them. So uh, what's the name of that function again? So again, I, I need kind of a help function here. So Normally, you can use tab to bring up, but but yeah, I think it's um, in this case. So I, I could do something like um, I could pull out that that column. So when you pull out a column. Um, it, it'll pull out basically what's called a series, but but something that represents basically that column. Um, but now I should be able to use contextual help. So if I hit tab now, uh, so yeah, what is it? I'm looking for it. Um, is is in a I think. So basically what it did here was, um, so, so yeah, that, that was what I was looking for. If you didn't see, um, it tests everything in there to, to tell whether it is 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 a in is a missing value or not, right? So that, that, was, that was kind of a good example of kind of how I could tell. Although sometimes, right, you see here, it's not allowing me to do the contextual help because it doesn't know, um, you know, so, so when I do this, um, this the, when I'm asking for a particular column here, it's coming back with, with a series, and it can't quite figure out that I, that I have a series here. So that's why I um, that's why I pulled it out into another variable so I can get my contextual help in there. 
So, uh, anyway, so uh, actually, if I want to check, um, so if, if I count those up, if I, if I do like the sum of those, so since false sums to zero, I should end up with a sum of zero if, if there's no missing values um, in that row anymore, right? So, anyway, that's just a, that was a bit of an aside there. Um, all right, so at this point, we, we've done some data cleaning, or we, we, we kind of handled our missing values, okay? So um, I, I should mention, you, you can create multiple imputers so that you could, uh, so if I wanted to fill in different ways, different columns, you can do that, right? So, so or you can have the, the imputer uh, imp applied to only particular columns, that type of thing, so, which is, which is common when you're kind of handling missing data. You'll, have, you'll often have more than one thing have missing data in there. So, um, okay. So, um, so I want to take a moment here t um, to talk a little bit about Scikit-Learn. Okay. So I, I think I'm going to have a whole nother video about this. So, so I give. So I might go over this a little bit quickly here. Um, but uh, we started using Scikit-Learn here. Um, which is a, a common um, library that lots of people that are using Python machine learning data analytics use uh, for machine learning. So Scikit-Learn has a really nice, clean API design, which is why one of the reasons why it's so popula uh, popular. Um, so there, there are three main kinds of, of objects in Scikit-Learn, um, estimators, transformers, um, and predictors, okay, and, and an object can be multiple things, so, so you, can have an, ha, you can have an object that's all three, it's an estimator, a transformer, and a predictor, all right, so, and what defines these is, is really, it doesn't, it doesn't use inheritance, it uses what's known as duct typing, so you can actually create your own estimators and transformers and use them within the, the scikit-learn API just by implementing the, the, methods that it expects a, an estimator and transformer or a predictor to have, okay? So the thing that defines an estimator is an object that implements a fit function. So any object that implements a fit function where it, the, the fit function takes a parameter, uh, a, a data set, okay? So it has to be able to take a, a pandas um, array, a, a pandas data set or a, a, a numpy array uh, for the fit function. If, if it takes that then it could be an estimator, right? Um, so, oh, for supervised learning, you actually pass in two parameters. So when you're fitting, basically fitting an, an estimator, when, when you fit an estimator in, in other contexts in machine learning, we call that training your model. So that's really the, 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 the training part of training a machine learning model. So for supervised learning, you give your input data, so you give your input data set, the, the big X, uh, then you give a second parameter, which is the, the labels, right? Um, and then when you fit a model, you're basically um, trying to form your hypothesis function that can map, you know, can, can make predictions from an input to an output. So from your input um, um, data set to your output labels, right? Um, so a transformer, Is a is a um, entity that takes a data set and transforms it into another data set. Okay, so the the, um, um, the simple imputer that we used is both uh, uh, an estimator and a transformer. Okay, so uh, it, it, when we do the fit, it, it estimates. So in this case, since we want it to be a median imputer, it it, it basically calculates the medians for all the values that it might have to do for the transformation. And then when you call transform, which we did here, it does the actual, so it takes the, the input, so notice it creates a new, um, 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 a new table basically, although it returns a NumPy array. And, um, so by default, um, Scikit-Learn mostly uses NumPy arrays. Uh, it, 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 this is relatively recent that it can understand pandas data frames, right? But as long as the input thing that you give it is like a table-like, 
and can do um, array indexing by rows and columns, and, and it's, it's basically two-dimensional, has rows and columns, uh, you can pass it into the transform method and into the fit method as your data source, right? Um, and then, the, so the transform method, back to that, it, it returns a, uh, a new um, table, basically. So whenever you, you do a transform, it always returns a NumPy array if you're using scikit. Uh, learn right, so you end up with a numpy, uh, you, a, a numpy array, which you can put back into a, a, a pandas table like we did here. Right. Um, so here in this case, the transform um, we're, we're using we're not using supervised learning, so we didn't. Um, I'm sorry, the, the fit we're not using supervised learning, so we we didn't have to pass in an array of labels. So this is unsupervised. Um, but yeah, in this case, the transform gives you your new uh, table or your new data source, um, but with the missing values filled in. Okay. Um, so it's very common to have things that are both estimators and transformers. And in fact, there's a... Um, um, there's a, a common method because you often want to do both at the same time, and I could have done that in the previous example. So you want to you want to fit um, your estimator to the data, and then you want to transform the data into you know your new set of data, um, both at the same time. All right. Uh, and then finally, there's predictors. So the machine learning um, algorithms that we're going to learn about in this course um, are examples of predictors because what they do when you do the fit. Um, is they build a hypothesis function. And then what you want to do is you want to use the hypothesis function that you learn to be able to predict new um, labels from, from new input data. All right? So some but not all estimators can be predictors. So all of the machine learning algorithms that we use in this class um, are predictors, basically. Right? So they'll have a predict function. So you, you can pass in you know the original data you trained with, and it will give you use the hypothesis function that it learned to make uh, to give you back the predictions that you had, or you could pass in new data that it hadn't been seen, like your, your your test data set to get predictions, right? Um, so you can use the estimators and transformers and predictors that. Scikit-learn has, um, or you can create your own, so, so we'll have a quick example of that below here where we create our own um, estimator and transformer. Um, and there's other things that make the Scikit-learn library uh, quite nice to use. Um, I'll let you read those, or, or I'm going to leave a more detailed discussion to that for um, another video here. So. Um, Okay, so back to preparing the data. So another thing that we need to do, we need to do something with the categorical attribute. So, uh, you know, we definitely think that that attribute might be useful for our machine learning um, algorithms that we want to train here, right? So, um, if you call, so, so right now we've got um, our... Um, We've, we've got a um, something where we've done the housing un underscore TR where we've filled in the missing values. Uh, but back to our original uh, housing, which was a copy after we did our stratified sampling here. So, so this, this one ha doesn't have the, 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 the values filled in yet, but it does have our categorical column here, the, the feature, the ocean proximity. Okay? So, so we want to handle that, right? Um, so, and we can't leave it as a string. So machine learning um, algorithms um, can't handle string value. They really need numerical data uh, in order to do that. Okay. So um, so let, let's let's look at that attribute again here. So here, all I've done was pulled out that column, that feature, um, into a new variable called housing cat. And here we're just, we're showing the first 10 of these, okay? So these were the first 10 um, instances of 
of uh, th those in our, our original housing data set. Okay, so re recall that. Um, so yeah, if we do this value counts again, recall we've actually got uh, five categories in here. So less than one hour of the ocean, inland, near ocean, near bay, and, and island. Okay. Um, so the simplest we could do is, is we could just assign you know integer values to these, right? Um, and that that's what the ordinal encoder will do by default. So this is again another method from Scikit-Learn. So all it'll do is it'll make an arbitrary mapping. So it might assign zero to be this category and one to be this, and so on. So um, if we create an ordinal uh, encoder, um, and then again, so now we're going to do the fit and the transform. So so the fit would basically do the same kind of thing. It would find all of the um, the the you know make a list of all the different values in this. Um, column that we're going to transform here, um, and then and it would it would arbitrarily assign an integer value to to each of those, right? And then the transform will go ahead and actually do that. So um, the the result of the transform will be a new NumPy array where we have zero, one, two, three, and four um, for these values here, right? So so if we do that, so we see that we've got. Um, values, it looks like floating point values actually, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 um, at this point. So, so if we look at the type, so, so again, you know, it, it returns a NumPy array by default um, when, when you call transform um, on a, on a scikit-learn scipit, um, transformer here. Um, Um, and, and the data type is, is indeed a float, right? But um, if, if we do like the value count, um, oh, value counts is a is a um, um, is a is a pandas data frame kind of thing. So uh, what's the the equivalent? Um, so that well, I'll skip over that. So um, we can go back and look at it uh, here. But but yeah, so we, um, back back to our encoder that we just did. So we can look at, for example, we can find the category. So again, this was the list of categories that that encoder made uh, here. And in this case, this is going to give you what the mapping is uh, because the, the 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 first one is going to be mapped to uh, a, a value of zero, and the second one to one. And so on, right? Um, okay. Oh, and and kind of a subtle issue here is that um, the the machine a machine learning algorithm a lot of them um, the 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 closeness of two categories uh, will mean something to it, right? So, um, and in this case, uh, we could actually use that to our advantage because. There is a natural ordering to these, you know. So, so islands is, is things that are actually surrounded by ocean and near bay and near ocean. Um, you know, so so you might want to think in, in terms of being like distance to the ocean, right? So, so you might want to have island as as uh, level zero and maybe near ocean as level one and near bay as level two, um, and then. Less than one hour from ocean is level three, and then inland is furthest. So there is kind of a, a, a natural ordering that you could come up with, right? Uh, and it might be useful to actually order things that way. It, but um, the way that we, um, you know, um, the, the way that the um, encoder does it, it, it won't give an ordering. It, it will pick an arbitrary ordering here. Right? So if you want to, you can enforce an ordering. So so that's what I did here. So I say that my my uh, when, when you create the ordinal encoder, um, if you give it a list of actually a list of a list of, of categories here in a particular um, order, and then if we redo the the fit transform, uh, you'll see that now it's assigned zero to island in, in the same order that I gave it. So zero to island, one to near ocean. So that might be actually optimal um, 
um, the optimal way to do this. Okay. But uh, but but that only works if there is kind of a um, if there is a, an ordering. If there is an ordering, you 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 might want to not not leave it to the um, encoder to pick an ordering for you, right? Because that might lead lead to suboptimal performance in your machine learning um, um, algorithm when you do your training. So. But so for some categorical variables, I mean there there is kind of a natural ordering of the category. You know, like freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, you might want to order them that way or, or in the reverse, right? Uh, but I mean, other categorical um, data. I mean, there, there's no kind of real logical relationship, right? So, like, for example, if you had a category of, like, job titles um, at a business that you're trying to build some model for, um, uh, there, there's no real reason why, you know, uh, maybe you could come up with something that might be useful, but, but there's no real reason why you might want to have a salesman be similar to manager or so on. So in that case, and it might be problematic to leave it as as you know a, a single encoding, right? Uh, you know, assign a single um, arbitrary number for each one of your categories. <clears throat> so so when that's the case, when there's kind of no ordering, a common solution is to use what's known as one-hot encoding. So so here. Uh, instead of, of, of leaving it as a single attribute with a number of values, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, we're going to, uh, a one-hot encoding will, will create multiple columns, so one for each of the original possible categories. So in this case, we're going to end up with, um, if we do the transform, we'll end up with five columns, right? And then we, we use a, a binary value. So each column represents either the presence or the absence of, of of the particular attribute, all right? So, so if, if we just look at it, uh, it might be um, um, easier to understand. So, so the result of doing a one-hot encoding, so here again, one-hot encoder is a scikit-learn fit transformer. Um, so if, if, we, if we transform that using one-hot encoding, we end up with a NumPy array with five columns now. So the first one, the, the, the first column represents whether it was, um, so the categories will tell us, that the first column represents whether it was less than one hour to ocean or not. So for, for all these, only one of these columns will be one, right? So the first two were in the category of, of less than one hour to ocean, right? And then our third sample from this was in the category of near ocean. So as you can see, only one of these. So, so that, that's basically what one-hot encoding is, right? So, yeah, I mean, there's some things to think about that. So, you know, here we only had five categories, but if we had like 100 categories, you're going to end up with 100 columns if you do a, a one-hot encoding, right? So, you know, you, you might be greatly expanding the number of features that you have, which, you know, might be bad for the machine learning, but if there's no, um, if there's no inherent ordering to these attributes, you know, you might want to do this, uh, this one-hot encoding, so that uh, you don't um, end up having the machine learning algorithm assume that, you know, one and two are more similar than one and five, or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, okay. So let's move on. So th that was that was basically um, uh, basically it for our kind of handling categorical attributes. Um, so another thing that we might want to do here when we're preparing our data um, is um, see if we want to add, you know, do some some um, what's known as uh, feature engineering. So so um, uh, add some new attributes that are combinations of existing attributes. Right. Um, so, 
so uh, the, the, the main thing about this, so we, we've already talked about this a little bit. Um, so we added in some attributes. Um, so so we, we, we engineered some attributes um, that look like they might be more useful, especially, you know, the rooms per household um, population, the number of people you know, on average in the household. Um, and, and in particular, the bedrooms per room, when we ran the correlation, looked pretty promising. It ended up um, making a better signal for that one. So, so that was another one. Okay. And so, so, so we could just add those, those features in by hand if we wanted to. But uh, here we're beginning to, to talk about creating uh, pipelines. We want to make this so that we can um, um, reproduce these, these kinds of steps easily so that we can... Um, Create our data set and, and try it with many different machine learning models. All right. So, um, so, so the main um, usefulness of this example is, is to show, again, using the scikit-learn library to automate this process. Okay. So instead of doing this by hand, uh, we can use, um, um, basically in this case, this is our first example, we're going to be creating our own um, estimator transformer um, that we can use in, 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 Sci in the scikit-learn framework to, uh, to do things and basically to create a pipeline, a data preparation and data cleaning pipeline here, okay? So, uh, like I said, if we want to create, a, a, in this case, we're just going to, we don't need an estimator, we just need a fit transformer. Um, so, because basically we, we want to be able to give it um, a, um, a, an input table. We want to create a new table where we've added in these two or three new feature columns, okay? And in this example, again, this example is directly from the textbook. So, in this example, to, to add a little bit of complexity, um, we make it so that we can have it as a parameter. So this is an example of we, we might want to parameterize this uh, where we try out some machine learning models with the, 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 the bedrooms per room and some of them without, right? So, so if we add that a capability into the transformer, so here in this case, um, um, this is just a regular Python class, right? So when we, uh, for our init method, our constructor method, our default is that we're going to add this attribute, but so uh, we can create this fit transformer where we set this to false when we create this so that we can create data sets um, where we add these features, but where we don't add in the bedrooms per room, right, real easily. So that, that's kind of what this is. And then, like I said, in order to do become a f um, an estimator, we just need a fit method. And in this case, we don't need to do anything. So for fit, the normal thing to do for fit, that, that's like doing training, but we don't have to, to, um, to learn anything or, or build a hypothesis, right? So, so we don't really have to, to do anything for our fit method. But the transform, basically, given an input table X, um, and you should think of this, again, as, as a NumPy array. So in, in this case, we're going to assume that it's a NumPy array, right? Um, notice. Um, so given the input um, X, we want to add in these, these columns. And that, that's all we do. Um, so um, we, we, we create like a new column, rooms per household, and a new, um, basically a new vector at this point, a new, this one, and a new vector population per household. Um, and then here, you know, if, if we didn't add the bedrooms, we, we're going to do this return statement. And all the C underscore does is this concatenate. So it, it concatenates the original table with these two new columns, okay, if you want to know what NP does. So, um, oh, here, here's where the contextual help might, might help me. So, um, um, So yeah, there there it is. Um, so so this this um, method here from from the NumPy uh, library 
concatenates um, along the second axis. So what that means is basically it concatenates um, um, uh, along columns. So it's going to add these as columns uh, in, in here, right? Um, and if, if this add bedrooms per room is true, we're going to add in a third column where we uh, calculate um, kind of the average number of bedrooms here. And then we're going to add that that third column in as well. All right. So, um, so, I mean, you know, once once you do that, I mean, this this is a real good kind of basic example of, of adding your own fit transformer or creating your own fit transformer, so you can use it in the scikit-learn um, uh, framework, basically. So once once we've combined that, once we've created, you know, defined this um, class, um, so you know, after you do this, um, you know, once you've got thing, these things working well, you know, in, in a real project, I would probably end up abstracting this out into a class-wide module, so I can reuse this combined this combined attributes adder um, fit transformer um, multiple times. So. Um, so, oh, I didn't run this cell here. So if we run this cell, it will actually um, create, um, oh, I skipped over. The, the reason here, um, I, I am, we are actually, um, um, so this this does inheritance in, in Python classes. So we're doing multiple inheritance here. We're, we're inheriting from the base estimator from scikit-learn and from the transformer mix-in from scikit-learn. Um, we don't actually use that here. Um, but um, the, 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 the transformer mix-in basically defines the, the fit transform function. So notice we didn't define the combined fit transform function here. Um, but um, um, and, and we didn't call, but I, I could have called the, the, the fit transform um, Machine's running a little bit here, so um, so so here when you use this this transformer mix-in, um, it defines a fit transform function for you. Um, I didn't show an example of that, but um, I could have done this line here. Since fit really doesn't do anything, we just directly called transform. But um, you know, if fit was doing something, we could have called fit transform to get the same thing. Um, but but yeah, we didn't we didn't define that, uh, but we got that from including the transformer mix in. Okay, and the base estimator uh, you can read about that. So it adds some things. So later on, we might want to have you know those things for the uh, estimators and transformers that we create here. So. Um, okay. So kind of one final thing before we put these all together. So let's talk a little bit about feature scaling. So another kind of big topic, and we're only going to touch on it here a little bit, um, is, is feature scaling. Um, so the, the issue here is that some, actually many machine learning algorithms are sensitive. So if some of your features um, Um, have widely different scales than other of your features. So, in fact, let me just uh, let's see here. So, if we do the describe again here, um, if I can make that a little bit bigger. So, so now I, I can look at kind of the min and the max and get an idea of the range, right? So, you know, like like logic and but but um, the the median age ranges from one to fifty two. But then we've got others, you know, like the, the median income that ranges from one, only 1 to 15, or the, the, the um, number of households um, ranges from 2. So there's, there's, there's a district with only two houses in it, <laughs> a very small one, all the way up to 5,000. But, but anyway, so the, oh, and then here's a big one. So the total rooms, yeah, ranges from um, 
um, um, a six to uh, the six is pride for the district that only had two households, right? So from six to um, uh, to four thousand. So th there's a very large variation in, in the ranges that we have here, and that that can cause a big problem. So the, the the problem is is that big numbers can seem like much more important to a machine learning algorithm than, than small numbers. And there's a lot more bigger numbers in like this total rooms column. So, so some, some machine learning algorithms are going to overemphasize this total rooms when it shouldn't be paying attention to that. All right. um, so yeah, I probably shouldn't have looked at the raw numbers. So if you look at the, the histograms, um, you know, again, you can get that same kind of information. Um, oh, um, 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 actually, uh, uh, yeah, you, you can't get it because I've already done some, some scaling. So, so let's talk about scaling. So what we want to do is we want to we scale our features. So, so there's two main ways. People either do min-max um, scaling or also called normalization, or they do standardization. Um, so min-max scaling basically just we scale everything to be in the range from zero to one. So every feature we're going to scale it to be from zero to one. Okay, um, and that's actually relatively easy to do by hand if you're using Python because we can use straightforward vectorization operations to do that. So to scale everything to, to be from zero to one, if you just first subtract, if you find the minimum value, which is what we did here. Um, so here, the, the minimum value, this would be the same thing if you look back at the table um, before we did our scaling, you know, so, so um, if you just go back and find the minimum value, and if you just subtract that, that will just shift everything down so that the minimum goes from whatever it was to being zero. So, so after we subtract the minimum, every, everything has a minimum of zero, but we still have some maximum and then if you find the maximum of each feature now, after you shifted it down, and then if you divide by that maximum, uh, now by dividing, you're going to change everything to be from zero to some maximum to be from zero to one. If you think about that, you should understand that. Um, and, and, you know, the vectorization makes it nice, so I don't have to write loops to do all this one by feature by feature. Um, I can just create one vector of all my minimums and then subtract and, and, and I'll get all of everything will be subtracted from their correct minimum for the column and I can create one vector of the maximums after doing that and do a division and that will divide everything by um, the, the maximum and, and I'll get everything then in the range from zero to one okay so the purpose of this histogram then was to show so now if you look at at, a, at them you see everything. Um, it didn't change the distribution, so they still have the same distribution, but the ranges now are all from zero to one using this normalization or this min-max scaling here. So, all right. Um, so actually, neither of these transformations that I do guarantees that the values. Um, I'm sorry, the, 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 neither of these guarantees that, that the distributions will be more normal-like. So, so neither of these changes the distribution. So that's another kind of um, cleaning that you might want to do. You might want to take the log or do something of these. If you have things that are kind of bimodal or, or, or uh, have, have strange-looking distributions, to try and normalize them more. Um, the other one, the standardization, um, has a bit of a drawback in that it doesn't guarantee that the attributes will, will be bounded within a specific range. So this, this normalization, all the attributes are going to be between 0 and 1. They'll have no value outside of that range, which for some machine learning algorithms that are particularly sensitive to things with different um, ranges, this is very useful to use um, normalization like this. So this other stand, called standardization, what we do, uh, we basically standardize everything to have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So to do that, it, you do a sim very similar thing to what we just did, but, but we, we, instead of subtracting by the minimum, we subtract uh, whatever the mean value is. This causes everything to be shifted over to have a mean of zero. 
and um, to rescale, we divide by the uh, standard deviation. This will cause everything to have a standard deviation of 1, okay? So now if you look at the histogram, so now everything isn't constrained to 0 and 1, but what has happened now is everything, if we calculate the, the mean and the standard deviation, every, every one of these distributions will have a mean now of 0 for the distribution, and we'll have a standard deviation of 1 um, for the distribution now. But you, you can end up, so notice, um, like this one has, has something that has a, a value all the way out to 15 or 16 here. So, so you can have things after doing standardization that have still slightly different ranges than other, other attributes, which can be an issue sometimes. So, so you have to be careful about that. Um, Okay, finally, um, to finish up um, this video, um, we, we kind of want to put that all together. So, um, and, and we want to we want to make a reproducible, um, what's known as a pipeline in Scikit-Learn, so that I mean, ultimately, uh, once we have this pipeline created, we can redo this data cleaning transformation from the raw data to our, our clean data ready for a machine learning, um, um, you know, ready to do machine learning training on, all right? So, um, just to recall, you know, back to, you know, our, our original data that we saved that we don't have any transformations on, um, although we have pulled out the, um, the label, so we've got nine columns at this point. But we haven't. We still have missing values um, in the, um, the the bedrooms, total bedrooms. Uh, and we still have this this categorical feature that we need to do something with. Okay. So now we're going to do all those, but build a pipeline to do kind of the transformations, the the data cleaning and preparation that we were talking about. Okay. Um, so. Um, we still have to, to do a little bit of things kind of by hand, so, so we still have to have um, um, a, a table that only has the numerical attributes because we're going to make one data pipeline transformation to do th the things with the numerical attributes, and we're going to make another parallel pipeline to do things with the categorical um, attributes, the ocean proximity. Okay. So. Um, so here, just, I mean, you know, just to finish it off here, so uh, we'll use these pipelines, which are, again, examples of transformers. So uh, um, a pipeline object takes a series of transformers. And remember, if you call f um, transform, um, um, if you give it a table of information, it transforms and returns a new table. So a pipeline basically just is a series of those transformers uh, where you give you start by giving the first transformer a table, and it returns a table, and then you take that transform table and give it to the next um, transformer in the pipeline, and so on. So, so really, conceptually, a pipeline is relatively simple. It's just a sequence of these transformations, OK? So for the numerical items, we want to do a, a transformation where we first fill in the missing values with the median using the simple imputer, uh, and then we're going to use the, our, uh, the one that we created ourselves to add in um, the combined attributes. And again, by default, we're adding in all three of those. So by default, we add in that bedrooms attribute, right? But if we wanted to, we, we could easily create a pipeline then so that we could um, use this as a meta parameter where we have some of our data sets where we don't have in that bedroom or, or we could have added in, done something so we didn't add in those other columns as well, right? So, uh, and then finally, we, we run it through the sam standard scaler. Um, so this will transform everything to have a range from zero to one, right? So that that's our basically our numerical uh, pipeline. So so if we give it the the numerical attributes, the results. Um, In this case, the result is a NumPy array. Uh, but now notice, um, you know, we've still got the same 16,512 features for our training set, right? But now we've got 11 columns um, because we added in um, 
uh, some columns. So uh, we added in three columns, basically. So we only had eight columns before we started this. I don't know if I printed it out. Um, or, well, actually, I, I can look at that. So, um, so before we did the transformation, the numerical had, um, oops, had um, uh, eight columns, right? So anyway, so, so, so this created a new table of information, but now we, we should have all of the missing values filled in with the median, and we've added our th three new attributes, so, so that's why we've now got um, 11 columns, you know, 11 attributes instead of eight, right? And all the values should be scaled, right? So, so if we were to look at it, we would see that all, all the values are scaled from zero to one for all of our attributes here. So. <coughs> um, So, um, so yeah, that, that was the data before the scaling, just to remember, just to remind you in our housing num here. So um, if, if we put this back into um, a pandas tra uh, a data frame, so, so I'm, I'm going to reuse the same name, but I'm going to put it back into a pandas data frame. I do have to add in, so notice we're taking the original columns, um, and we add in some new column names so that our, our data frame, so that I can refer to these three new columns by with a name here in our pandas data frame. Uh, but this is mostly meant to, to, to prove to you. So now, you know, the thing to look at, so you should find that all the counts, uh, especially for the total bedrooms, are 16,512, right? Because we filled in the missing data. And the min for all these is essentially zero, so it's a very small number, close to zero. And the max for all these um, is um, oh, I'm sorry, um, we're, we're actually doing a standard scalar, so so we're not doing uh, making things between zero and one. We're making things to have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So, so yeah, if you look at this, you should find that the mean is zero for all these. So, so it looks, again, it's, it's, it's a scientific notation here, but it's very small. It's basically zero. And the standard deviation for all these is basically one, right? So, because we went through the standard scalar, all right? So, so yeah, the, 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 the min and the max won't be exactly zero and one, um, but, but they'll be relatively small, so. Um, all right, and that was only the numerical attributes, so we can have a, a separate transformer for the um, categorical attributes, um, and then, yeah, as a final thing, there, there's a, this is a relatively new thing, apparently, uh, for scikit-learn, but you can create what are known as column transformers that only transform on a list of, of columns, a list of attributes, right? So to, to make one final transformer that, that will do everything for us, uh, we can use this column transformer, um, and, and have our, our numerical pipeline only do the things on the numerical attributes and then have a, a separate one-hot encoder. So, so we'll use one-hot encoding here, um, only do things on the categorical attribute, the, the ocean proximity, okay? So this is a nice one thing, although this is reusing the numerical pipeline that we had here, but we don't have to, by hand, pull out the numerical attributes. We just have to specify for the column transformer, which are the, uh, the, the, the names of the columns here. So that's another nice thing here is that it can handle pandas data frame. So we can pass in a list of, um, of, of column names um, that it can pull from a, 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 pandas, um, a pandas data frame, right? If you were passing it in a um, NumPy array, you'd have to give a, a, a list of, um, of, of indexes, of column indexes, basically. I, I believe, so, in this case. So. All right, so, so the result of that um, is, you know, so now we've now got 16 columns. No, it's because we added five, we, we actually replaced one column with five, so that added four columns. And we added three columns um, uh, when we did the numerical um, transformation. So, so in the, in, anyway, we end up with 16 total columns.
and if you you know do the describe here, oh, this is a NumPy array, so I can't use. I'd have to put it back into a NumPy array, which which I won't do here. So, uh, but if we did that, you should find that you know um, everything has a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, except for our one hat encoding columns are going to have a min of zero and, and, a, a, and a max of one, and you know so on. Okay. Um, so that's it. We, we, you know, we, we covered quite a bit of these um, in this video. Sorry that that video is quite a bit longer than I kind of was thinking it was going to be. Um, but, but yeah, so that's kind of all, uh, you know, a real quick kind of introduction to uh, the, the preparation stuff. At this point, we've now got a, a nice pipeline and a nice clean data set that should be ready for um, training by a machine learning um, algorithm, which is what we'll do in the next video.